So we are back to discuss HBO's new show, Lovecraft Country, uh, based off of the book that came out a couple years ago, uh, essentially about a group of black people going into racist America and having to deal with that, and Lovecraftian monsters as well. At first, I have to say, I thought I was going to be annoyed with this show because based off the trailer, there's a lot of racism and there's a lot of mm. monsters, and I'm more interested in the Lovecraftian mythos than I am in the racism because all of the stuff going on in the country nowadays you kind of get desensitized to it and sometimes it can be a little tiring as well if that's all you ever see in the news you know yeah but I mean it, it's really simple and basic like there's not much nuance to the racism right like this isn't like Watchmen where you're talking about a whole bunch of complicated political issues um, it's just people that hate black people right it's yeah. like super it's like super simple right like mm -hmm. like all all the villains all the white people are mustache twirling like villain cartoon character farces you know um it, it, it's 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 not as it's not as complicated or real or or uh connecting to our world as as say watchmen you know. and, and on the topic of Watchmen, I really like the nuance of the character Judd, the sheriff that dies in the first episode, which starts off the whole uh, chain of events. Even though he had like, you know, the KKK robes in his closet and he yeah. was kind of like, you know, a secret racist, he still went out of his way to make friends with the main character, Angela, who was a black woman. And, you know, so there, there's more nuance to it. He's more of a complicated character, mm -hmm. whereas a lot of the uh, racists here, like you said, they're just typical, you know, cartoony, you know, villains. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Watchmen had a lot of different things that it was talking about, a lot of different issues. Uh, it was very complicated, you know, because we're talking about reparations and assimilation and police brutality. Um, all these different issues were coming up. Uh, you know, yes, there was the clan. Yes, there were the mustache twirling, like, clan people but like it also got into politics and coding racism under other things uh which happens um and stuff like that lovecraft country yeah i mean I, so i i did not like lovecraft country as 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 much as i liked Watchmen. um i oh, same I, here I, I, well, I i mean i think you're more positive on lovecraft country in general i just think it's a little over the top and and ridiculous and so I'm not sure what to I'm not sure what to make of it yet. It's very fast moving. Um, the pace is weird and off. So let me yeah. let me get into the premise for those of you who are because we have a lot of people who watch our like Watchmen or Mandalorian stuff and they've never seen the show but they like listening to our discussion on it. So <laughs> that is really funny. Yeah, I'm surprised because so many people like it's amazing how many people who post in my comments will say I've never read the books but I love your your book theory videos they're like and i'm like what are they getting out of them but they they love them i don't know <laughs> like, i saw that a lot a lot of the comments on picard like people had no they, they knew they knew about star trek they had no interest in picard but they like listening to the picard uh content anyways <laughs> just because we were so frustrated <laughs> <laughs> two men frustrated with tv yeah <laughs> So the premise of Lovecraft Country, I'm taking this from the Wikipedia, fair warning. Lovecraft Country follows Atticus Freeman as he joins up with his friend, uh, late, I forgot her, her name really, like, Letty? It's, Letty's the nickname, but I want to yeah. say Leticia. I'm probably butchering that. His friend Letty and his uncle George to embark on a road trip across 1950s Jim Crow America in search of his missing father. This begins a struggle to survive and overcome both the racist terrors of white America and the terrifying monsters that could be ripped from a Lovecraft paperback. So that's the premise. And that premise is over within two episodes. Like you, <laughs> you, you think that, oh, wow, the entire season, 10 episodes, of course, thank God. Um, I would have preferred eight. Well, really the road, the road trip eight. is just episode one. The road uh, trip is just episode one. And the entire finding his dad and getting away from like this insanity is over by the end of episode two. Right. Which is weird, but also kind of refreshing in a sense. Now, now keep in mind, this might come out by the time episode three has come out. So just we've only this is only talking about episodes one and two. We have not yet at, at time of recording. We have not 
see in episode three. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. But the premise basically encompasses two episodes. And I saw the preview for episode three. It has nothing to do with what this premise right, says. Right. The previews are like Haunted House and racism on the north side of Chicago. Yeah. Right. And I got to say, the one thing I really liked about Lovecraft Country is... Have you ever seen, like, those comedians where they'll make the joke about how white people are out of their minds in a horror movie? Where if they hear some, like, some creepy noise outside, they'll go to investigate, but black people will just run the other fucking way? This seems exactly like this. All the black characters do everything right, or they try to, (laughs) and they have, like, the perfect reaction to everything. For example, how many times have you seen a horror movie where it's like a monster and the monster bites someone and it takes everyone like a couple episodes or, or a very long time to figure out that the monsters multiply through, through bites? Right. I mean, the, the... They got it the first time. So so the premise the premise is also that the protagonists l- love sci-fi. And yeah. so like when... And sci-fi and fantasy. So like when stuff happens, they're familiar with it. They've been, they've been down this road before. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so when, and when spectacular things happen, they're not too shocked because they've read a lot of books about spectacular things, you know? So like when, you know, when magic happens and there's literally magic happening, they're just like, oh, well, that's, it's, it's magic. It's magic. magic. I've yeah. read about that. You know, <laughs> like I've seen enough things now that nothing's going to shock me. In episode two, when they're each in their own rooms and they have like the hallucination going down, yeah. after they overcome this like test or whatever it is, they but all three of them come out of the rooms and they're like, "Who did you see?" Yeah. Like, oh, th- it's very meta, and I kind of like that. Yeah. Um. So I mean, let's start. Let's start with with, with episode one. Um. So when the show began, so I went to college on the south side of Chicago, and so the the story begins on the south side of Chicago, which you know. Right, right at the start, I was like, "Oh, this is this is pretty cool," because it was it was very historically accurate in that the South Side of Chicago in the 1950s was this renaissance of of blues music, and there were these incredible blues bars everywhere, um, and it was very culturally rich time. Uh, the South Side of, that that went downhill when they when they built the ghettos and the ghettos uh, really brought a lot of um, problems to sh- to the city of Chicago and then the they by law they started shutting down all the blues bars and they and they killed all of this culture that was that was on the south side of Chicago and 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 there was a huge downfall so it was really interesting for me to start the story in this golden era of of Chicago the Chicago South Side. Um, and I love that part. It was a little weird that they did an entire blues number. I don't know if you remember that. And I was like, really? yeah. they did the whole song? That, that was really weird. And it was really weird when, when he went to that bar and the guy was getting a blowjob in the back f- for no reason. Like nothing to do with the plot. You know? <laughs> and you're like, okay. <laughs> That's all fine. You know, I, I, was, I was liking the premise. I was liking the start. I liked the characters. You know, the three, the three main characters are... This this guy who writes a a uh, a green book, a black safety travel guide, um, a guy who's come back from the the Korean War, and um, a woman who uh, seems to be down on her luck and and doesn't really have a place to stay, you know. And the three of them decide to travel cross country to Massachusetts. Um, to find his dad who's missing because they receive a mysterious letter. Um, and so they go to where Lovecraft is from. And then they recognize that Lovecraft was a huge, huge, enormous racist. Um, you, <laughs> it's really, it's hard to come up with um, people in entertainment and history that were more racist than, like who are beloved but are also racist. Like, Lovecraft is just extremely racist. Like, I don't know, like, any, any other beloved authors who were so ridiculously, like, outwardly racist. Didn't he name his cat um, the N-word? Yeah, I don't know. But, he, he, I mean, he has a poem um, about, the, about black people using the N-word and how they're, like... Uh, um, lesser beasts and things like this. Like, mm. like so it, 
like the the premise is is interesting that you know we're dealing with the fantastical world of Lovecraft because his mind is was crazy and creative, but at the same time he was such a he was just over the top racist like like there's no defense of him, and so this is the whole thing about like separating author from from art, like what do you do when somebody on a personal level is such a monster but like you know they're able to produce like this, you know wonderful like you know, art, interesting art, you know, like, what do you do with Woody Allen, who, who creates great movies, but, or, um, uh, who's the rapist in, uh, yeah, the year who fled to Europe? <laughs> um, oh, I, for, oh, I know yeah, what you're talking yeah. about. I forgot his name. Uh, um, but the, uh, you know, so the premise is all interesting. And then where, where it went downhill for me is when they started their road trip. Because it's supposed to, like, this is supposed, like, they're going from Chicago to Massachusetts in the 1950s. So America, the American North was not segregated uh, in the 1950s, like in any way. Um, and so it's really weird to me when they, for instance, stop at an ice cream stand and there's a white section and a colored section. Like that wasn't, that wasn't a thing. And then they stop in this town, and within minutes, within minutes of getting into the town, like a bunch of people are in a pickup truck, like ready to murder them. And it's one thing, it's one thing, like, and, and this is why I think, like, this is kind of a disservice, is that, like, like, racism is something that's complicated and nuanced. Everybody's racist on a subconscious level, and the racist system. Some people aren't even aware of the racist system or deny that the racist system exists because, you know, it's, and people aren't even aware of their own racism. And that's, that's most racism when we run into it is this subconscious, um, you know, systematic thing that's somewhat invisible to, to, to white people. And then you get into a show where it's like the racism is so overt, like, it's not that these people are racist. They're murderously, overtly racist. Like they see a black person and they're ready to kill them. Like that's not, that's not racism. And I don't even think it's going to be racism in the 1950s because murder is still illegal. So like pushing <laughs> yeah. someone to the point, like even if you hated a black person and you see one walking down the street, like people aren't going to jump to murder because there are laws, you know, <laughs> like, like, so that's why I think it's like, that's what, that was my big problem in the beginning. Like they go into a town and, and people are ready to jump into a pickup truck to murder them in Ohio. Like, where are they? Like, like rural New York? Like they're not that far from Cleveland or Pittsburgh. Like the route from Chicago to Massachusetts like, it's, it's, it's like, one, it's filled with black people. <laughs> like, it's a, not a segregated time. Like, and so it's like, like all of a sudden, we, they went from this, like, incredible historical accuracy of the south side of Chicago to just, like, stuff we associate with, with like, stereotypical Alabama. But I don't even think that would happen in Alabama. Like, a black person <laughs> enters a town and everybody jumps into a pickup truck and is ready to kill them? Like, is that what pissed you off so much? Because Preston messaged me on Facebook. He's like, oh, this is so stupid. Uh. So uh, I think it's a disservice because when, when, when we talk about racism in America and the problems and, the, and how, it, how it kills America and how it kills mm. this, us, so many people are unaware that they're racist because they watch TV and they go, well, I'm not like that cartoon character racist. I don't hate black people. Right, but you're not really a like addressing your, your, you know, unconscious biases, you know, like when I talk about like unconscious biases, like, like one thing I bring up all the time is some people believe there's a correct way to speak English. Like language is completely and utterly relative, right? Like in America, we say little. In Britain, they say little or little, right? Mm -hmm. we, Americans transition the T in the middle of little to a D. And in, in England, they might keep it as a T or they'll transition it to a glottal stop, a little, you know, or whatever. Um, and, but it, it's relative. There's no correct way to speak it, you know? 
uh, unless you're completely like lacking any sort of empathy that, you know, that, and, and insist that, I mean, my mother is this way, there's a the right way to speak. Now, when people hear the way, when white people hear the way black people speak, they're so, they're so, they're racist, but they're unaware of it. They'll say like, oh, that, that person is speaking wrong. You know, they'll say something like when, when a black person might say, uh, I've, I'm going to ask you a question. A, a white person will go, well, that's just incorrect. It's incorrect to say, I'll ask you a question. Now, there are lots of cases where, where sounds shift around, just like what I'm saying with little and little. And the American system is racist enough that if I went into a job interview and I used the word ax, they're going to think I'm dumb and I'm going to have a less chance of getting that job. And yet all I did was say the word in a way that a black person might say it in America. And so that's, the, that's an example of this like subconscious, like systematic racist, racism that like people aren't even aware of. That, like, that, oh, I'm just going to assume that the way black people speak is wrong and incorrect and they're stupid. And, and that affects things, right? And that's, that's closer to what racism is, not I'm going to jump in a pickup truck and murder you. Like, and so like, and so when people are sitting there denying their racism in America and, and people deny their racism constantly, um, they, they'll point to these things on TV like, well, I'm not lynching people. Yeah, but, you know, you're going around thinking a whole group of people are, are dumber because they speak differently than you, you know. And, and so that, that's my problem is like there's no subtlety in the show. Like everything is a farce. And that's what you didn't like. Yes. And that was that was way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was way too much for you to truly enjoy the show. It just it just hit me because I'm just like, well, what's the point? Like, what's the point of the show? Like, well, you're right. What's the point of the show? Personally, and I had this discussion with people on my Discord. What is the point of this show? Because I keep thinking that HBO is trying way too hard to do more racy type of shows. And that's fine, they can do whatever the hell they want. I just think they're doing it a little too much. For example, last year we had Watchmen. Now we have Lovecraft Country. Whenever Dave and Dan was gonna, were gonna do Confederate, maybe it would've come out this year or next year, I don't know, that was canceled. But if Dragon Demands is correct, then the Game of Thrones prequel would've featured Westeros and, uh, original, West, Westeros' original inhabitants as black people in a war with white people, and at the end of the, the, the series, the black people were gonna be turned into these green uh, monsters known as the Children of the Forest. Yeah. I, I just think HBO is doing way too many racial stuff, especially in the times we're living in now, which not as yeah. bad as like 1950s America, but personal opinion, I just, I get tired of seeing so much racial shit on TV all the time. Now, I, I, I want to jump to the, the second episode. I mm -hmm. liked the second episode more. Um, it was still a little weird. but The pacing was off. Like I felt pacing. as though they, they, they crammed five episodes worth of stuff into oh, one episode. Yeah, that could have been stretched out. Like the plot could have been an entire season. You, know, uh -huh. you felt like you felt like the end was like a like a season finale like climax, right? Yes. Um, so the second episode, I, I mean, I liked it more than the first episode because there was there was a, a greater theme to it. Um, so the the you know they meet this magical cabal of of racists who want to who want to use the protagonist to open a gateway to. Uh, the time of Adam and Eve so that uh, he can get back to the simpler basic times where Adam, you know, there was an order to the universe or something strange. Anyway, um, and so they get to the climax and during the climax, this song starts playing called Whitey, Whitey on, on the Moon, moon which is mm -hmm. the name of the episode. Whitey on the Moon. Like, and the, the, the song is essentially like, my life sucks, like I'm impoverished, but Whitey's on the moon. Um, you know, my, my sister got bit by a rat, but Whitey's on the moon. And, you know, the statement is white America, like, has a lot of wealth. 
and they can do a lot of fantastic things with their science and technology. And yet we can't like lift black people out of poverty. Like, you know, we're just leaving them, you know? And so it's this ridiculous idea that like, okay, like whitey, whitey is, you know, walking on the moon, but we can't, but we can't get people to not get bitten by rats in the city. Um, you know, and, and, and there's all sorts of these ridiculous examples. Like they built a floating Apple store outside of Singapore, but, you know, uh, you, people, <laughs> people still have polio, you know, like it's, it's ridiculous, the disparity. And, and I get it. And like the plot of the show is you've got this like castle filled with magic wielding like wizards, <laughs> you know, but who want to do all this crazy stuff with their magic, but they don't want to like just help people, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and I get that like, okay, that's, that's an interesting theme, but at the same time, like, what did that have to do with them having it like a dream sequence where they were like, he was like fighting his Korean girlfriend and she was trying to have sex with him with a snake penis, you know, like, like what was that about? Like, I, th like, I think that was the, uh, the members of the lodge, um, just sing like for entertainment purposes, you know, they're just, I guess they bet on who can survive the longest or whatever. Cause right. But that wasn't even their mission. Their mission was to use him to help open the doorway. So like, right. there, there's a lot of useless moments. For example, <laughs> the moment where, um, his father has a conversation with the uncle where apparently the uncle is really Atticus's father. Yeah. Supposedly. Which right. doesn't really mean anything. Right, considering he, like, spoilers, he, he like, freaking dies, like, a minute later. <laughs> you know? Right. And not to mention, the ritual fails. Now, at first I thought, oh, the ritual failed because maybe it was, uh, the father was different. But no, actually that had nothing to do with anything because it's from right, the mother. The mother. Um, not to mention... Uh, the cult is also sexist as as well as racist, and I'm I'm gonna go ahead and assume when the woman and this is how much this is how little I kind of care about this show because I don't remember <laughs> the white people's names, the, the, the pretty blonde girl, um, when she gives Atticus the ring and yeah. at, like she does something to it because during the ritual this darkness comes from the ring. Yeah. So I guess that's her way of saying fuck you to the cult who won't accept her because she's a female. Right, right. Essentially, like, she brings down the cult because they're sexist. Um, and I think, you know, I in the previews, she appears later, so maybe there's going to be more to it. But, um, yeah, it seems like, it seems like she, she sabotaged the whole thing. But then again, the, the, the ritual failed the last time, so who knows? <laughs> It was a really, it was a really stupid ritual. <laughs> and HBO does this thing with like new shows. They did it with Watchmen. Um, I don't know if they, I don't know if they ever did it with Thrones. Basically, at the end of every ep first episode of a new show, they gave you a teaser with scenes from the entire season. Yeah. And apparently, Atticus's entire family, his aunt, his cousin, mm -hmm. uh, I guess he at some points will also be involved in other like. Lovecraftian type mythos adventures throughout the season, and I don't know if I really care about it. I, the I always tell everybody give it three episodes, give it the three episode try. <laughs> but we, I feel like we just watched an entire season's worth of material in two episodes. Yeah, I mean, it was it was especially the second episode. Like, jeez, that like so much happened in that episode. Um, they introduced like this entire huge world and then destroyed that world like immediately. So I it's mean, different. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's not the usual show you would, you would come to expect. And I kind of like that. And I like how, you know, the main characters are, they're smarter than the average, you know, people you'd find in a horror flick, like, you know, the comedian joke. Um, but at the same time, ugh, it's, it's not really it, enthralling me. Yeah. I mean, it was interesting enough, and, and, and it's like I liked the plot of the second episode, and I want more of that, but I don't, I don't know why a lot of stuff was just added. Like, like why, why did we need an entire thing in the beginning of like the uncle and the, the female protagonist like enjoying their rooms? Like, you know, like, 
how did that, why, first of all, why did they set up the rooms so they'd enjoy them, considering that they only cared about the, the one guy? Um, but, you know, she's all really impressed with all of these clothes, and, and he's really impressed with all these books. How many books can you read in a, in a freaking hour? I mean, like, I don't, but it's like, they're, so you, we start with this huge scene where they're, like, enjoying their rooms. Then they, they start getting suspicious. They go into this town. You know, they find, they find this tower that looks suspicious. They figure out that their, their father might be there. They go back. There's a creepy dinner scene. They have the hallucinations for no reason. They go to rescue the dad. And then there's, like, the, the, uh, the ceremony, and, and the whole castle, like, falls down. You know, I guess there's an escape and things like that. But, you know, some of it is just, some of it was very extra. Like, considering how much they were trying to cram in, what was the what was the point of some of it? You know, like I, I, I have no idea. I know nothing about this cult that was immediately killed. Other than <clears> they, <throat> other than that, they want immortality. Not to mention, there's also a lot of useless, pointless scenes. One of the one of the ones um, in episode one is when George Freeman, Atticus's uncle, is in bed with his wife, and there's kind of like this weird scene between them. I think it yeah. goes on for a little too long. <clears throat> oh yeah. The bl- the blowjob scene and behind the bar, that was random. Right, or, like, or th- why, why spend all this time establishing that he loves his wife only only to, like, have him kill the next episode? <laughs> well, I, I would argue that we need to see some of George and his wife together to get a sense of how much of a good husband he is, how happy he is in his life. So I get it, showing us that, you know, it, I just think it went on for too long, which is somewhat of a problem with the show. Scenes going on for too long, like... Uh, Letty and her sister doing that musical number, but I did like George. You know, the uncle. He good character. I was sad when he died. Yeah, that went on for a long time. Like, <clears throat> you know, finding the diner, and and then and the pickup truck filled with guys that are ready to kill them. Like, I suppose it introduced the blonde girl, uh, who for some reason was following them, you know, or something. But it, it was just so odd. Like, I mean, maybe. Maybe, and I'm going to say there's a slim chance that all of these things are going to come back together in the end, but I just, I sincerely doubt it. Like, it just seems like a bunch of random stuff happening to them. But to me, this is one of those shows where I don't want to sit here week to week waiting for the next episode. I'd rather binge it when it's all out and then <laughs> give my final verdict when all the episodes are out and I can just watch them one after another. Yeah, I mean, it's too bad that, like, the uncle was kind of the, the most likable character I like yeah, the uncle. Because our protagonist is a little bland. We don't really know much about him. Um, well, he's the know. bathroom sign for, uh, yeah. the, uh, for for the everyday black man in the 1950s just trying to make their way right. uh, in the country, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's, he, he's very butch and, and all that. And, and then, so, you know, I felt more connected. To, and maybe it's because they did waste time with him showing him how much he loves his... his uh, his wife and how, how he had this relationship with his brother and things like that. <clears throat> and so, I mean, may, and I don't know, he just seemed, he seemed warmer and more interesting. Um, and then they kill him off. And so, oh well. I also wanted to know more about the monsters. In episode two, we see one of the monsters being birthed by a cow. Yeah, like why, did, why was, was that scene? Because I thought they worked like vampires. Didn't they establish that they worked like vampires yeah. in the first? And then in the second that... episode, they're being birthed by a cow? And, and... <sighs> A lot of these really cringy reviewers love to say, the one thing that was really way more terrifying were not the monsters, but the racist. Really? I, I felt the monsters were more terrifying and, and immensely more interesting and dangerous than these racists. I mean, of course, the sheriff, you know, the whole Sundown County thing was really insane. Yeah, I did that like was, the that tension was very, there. That was a very tense scene, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was great. Um, but I, I want to see more monsters and maybe we might get that as the season progresses. But like I said, I, I don't think I'm, I'm willing to sit here week after week and just, you know, watching this, I'd rather watch it, binge it when it's all out. Right. It, it's just also like the previews for next week. It's like another cartoonish mustache twirling, like overt murderous racist. Like, like, it's just how, like, <laughs> you know, they go into a town and they run into some white people, and they're murderous racists. Then they make it to they make it to Massachusetts, and they're trying to find this village, and they run into some murderously racist like cops. Then they find the the uh, mansion, the the village, 
and they go into the mansion and it's, you know, some murderously racist white people. And then, well, I guess they never tried to murder them, though. Kinda in the room. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, maybe in the room. And then they go to the village and the, the sheriff there is, you know, a murderous racist. Like, it... <laughs> And then the only the only person who seems to be not a murderous racist is this strange butler friend guy who's just kind of weird and the girl who murders her father and her entire cult. So I I mean so I guess they're murderous too. So I mean <laughs> so it's just I've never seen The Wire but someone <clears throat> excuse me someone told me in The Wire uh, all the white people are bad guys. No, 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 no. No, they're not? Okay. No, The Wire The Wire is the most, I mean, uh, probably of any show, like, it's, it's, like, every character is real, and every character has good and bad sides, and every, like, much, like, there's no one who's, like, every character is, there's no character who's a farce. Like, even the characters that are fucking scary, you're like, those people exist in the real world. You know, mm-hmm. this isn't like uh, there's no, you know, it's not like even Game of Thrones where you have Ramsey and Joffrey and it's like, well, people aren't really like that. But you'll have you'll have characters where you're like, oh, my God, that that person's horrible. But I know there are people that exist like that. Um, no, every single person is is a real person in the wire, um, a, a real flawed person. There's no perfect people. Um, no. And and. I mean, the protagonist is a white guy. I mean... Uh, oh, is he? Oh, I'd rather yeah. watch The Wire than this. And honestly, from what it sounds like, the, the show should be called Murderous Racists instead of Lovecraft. <laughs> it's just like, like... They're so cartoonish. They're so cartoonish. No, no. The, wi- the Wire has, has... If there's anything, it's just the most incredible subtlety with all of the characters. That's good. Uh, I, oh, I would rather God. watch The Wire and review that than, than what's going on here. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the great so the, just an example of like what the wire did. So the wire in the first season, there's this real just fuck up, um, like police officer who accidentally shoots a boy, or no, he accidentally shoots one of the other cops who's undercover. He, 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 the, the cop is running and he doesn't want to blow his cover um, by getting caught, and so. He, it's a fleeing black man, so the guy shoots him. And then it turns out that it's like the star cop, and he's like, fuck. And so they bust Wait, wait, him. Are, you, you, are you spoiling the wire for me? Oh, oh God. Oh, I mean. <laughs> Bless the Jesus Christ. I haven't seen it yet. Jesus. Anyway, and, and there's another, there's another, I think he No, gets, fuck, stop anyway, spoiling it. The point, the point is, is you're just like, what a stupid fuck up. Like, what a fucking idiot. What a horrible character. And then that, that character, like- Loses his job as a cop, so he becomes a public school teacher. And in the fourth season, he's like this, he's this, he's this incredible public school teacher. And you're like, oh, like, that's, that's really, that's really cool. Like, you know, there was like redemption for this, like, really stupid fuck up character, you know, like who, who, and you, you, you're still like, you don't know what to think about him. Like, you're like, yeah, he's a fuck up, but he's not, it's not a complete fuck up, you know? He's, he, this better he's, be like a side background character. No, I mean, there are, no, he's, 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 <laughs> he's a good, you know, he, he's a little above background, but he's not one of the, he's not one of the leads. Okay, good, good, good. And uh, to your, to your mustache twirling uh, villains in this show, <laughs> if they're gonna I agree with you if they're gonna like be mustache twirling they they might as well go all the way give them like the straw hat and like the beer belly and the, the crooked teeth and have this song play in the background right <laughs> like you know <laughs> tie, tie somebody to the to the, to the railroad tracks right yeah <laughs> so and overall, like I said, I like the CGI. I, I like that this is, you know, the main characters are not dumb. They do everything right. And they it's very meta. Yeah. But it's not like Watchmen, where every next episode, I'm like, okay, it's it's next episode's here. I'm sitting down and watching it. We were really dragging our feet with, with yeah. Lovecraft Country. And uh... yeah, and well, there's nothing there's nothing in Lovecraft Country that relates to the real world. Like, unless you live in a place where people are jumping into, um, 
you know, pickup trucks and murdering people or like having like magical wizard cults. Um, there's, there's nothing that really relates to the real world. Unlike Watchmen where everything is like insanely topical, <laughs> like mm-hmm. almost, you know, like uh, uh, almost in a predictive sense. Like, you know, it's... Uh, Watchmen was last year and the first episode of Watchmen, uh, a police officer is pulling over somebody and he suspects something's up, but he can't release his gun. Which is like, um, what's the technical word? It's police, um, not accountability, but it's like police oversight, I guess you could say. That's something people today, now, are asking for. Yeah. Especially, like, it's still, Watchmen is still relevant, and I'm sure it will be, like, be relevant years afterwards, especially with the whole police dynamic and them wearing masks and stuff. There was a guy, Sean King, who was basically telling the, uh, the sheriff, uh, the, the police department of the, uh, uh, of the where the, the the most recent black man was killed, released the name of the cops who killed him. Well, we're gonna release the names of all of your police officers, which is one of the reasons why the cops and Watchmen was wearing were wearing the masks. Yeah. So, Watchmen is still relevant right now. Lovecraft Country, it's fun, but I I'm not gonna make a verdict on it now. I'm gonna wait until all the episodes are out, and if you want, we can revisit it if you're down. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean at this point, like, gotta finish it. It's funny because, like, even when a series isn't very good, even when a series isn't very good or I, I don't even like it that much, I've got to finish it. So, like, my, my right. wife and I have been watching this show called Working Moms, and it's like we both agree that it's a below-average show. It's not great. It's, it's not horrible, but it's certainly not great. But it's like, ah, at this point, we just got to finish it. We're almost, we're <laughs> almost done. We're almost done. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna so. wait until until uh, when. So there's ten episodes. So I think yeah. uh, October 18th is when the last episode airs. Um, <laughs> holy shit! <laughs> one of the uh, one of the episodes, episode eight. This is I'm not gonna say it out loud because yeah, of course. Um, this is <laughs> what episode eight is called. You're on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Send it, don't, send say it out, don't say okay, it out loud. I won't, I won't, gonna, I, won't gonna, I won't, I won't, I won't. That's oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, horrible. Horrible. Uh, that would be funny if, like, every friggin' episode title is, like, a racial slur, but Jesus. Okay, well, but it's not, by the way. But, um, okay. So, Lovecraft Country, I'm going to reserve uh, judgment on that until the very last episode. I'll binge it. Uh, keep me updated, by the way, if you like it or not. If it gets good, maybe I'll yeah, catch I up mean, with you. Yeah, I mean, episode two is a huge improvement on episode one. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's yeah, I don't know. It's just a big farce. I'm not. Press the know. messages be on Facebook. He's like, oh, I'm so annoyed with this show. Oh. <laughs> it's like I still wanted to like it, but I don't know. It's just, I mean, I. I uh, I like shows where there where there's where there's depth and there's a lot of things to think about and there's characters that I can relate to and you mm-hmm. know and I want art to imitate life and life to imitate art and things like this. I want that connection. Right. And, and I'm not I've never been into farce too much and this is a little bit it's 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 a bit farcical. So yeah. Understandable. Yeah. Uh guys, do you mind if we wrap it up? Yeah, yeah. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on uh this uh show review we might do some other shows i don't know uh we got to do witcher still that's that's on the back plate <laughs> we took a break from fire and blood which i'm dreading going back to because that next chapter is long uh guys once again thank you so much for joining us we'll see you next time have a good one